In this video, we illustrate using an example the convergence rate of the secant method, which is used for approximating the root x equals r of the equation f of x equals 0. The rate of convergence of the secant method is not linear or of the first power, but of order phi, where phi is the golden ratio to quantity the square root of 5 plus 1 divided by 2. f of x for this example is e to the x power plus x divided by 20 minus 1. The viewer can verify that f of 0 equals 0 and, as an additional exercise, that both f prime and f double prime are greater than 0, so that r equals 0 is the unique root to the equation f of x equals 0. What we are going to do in this lecture is to generate the first few estimates a sub n of the root r equals 0. Then, we find the corresponding error values e sub n which we define as a sub n minus r. Of course, for this example, since r equals 0, e sub n equals a sub n. In general, the absolute value of e sub n is the absolute error in using a sub n as the estimate for the root x equals r. After finding the first few values of e sub n, we find the first few terms of the sequence whose terms are given by e sub n plus 1 divided by e sub n raised to the fifth power. Then, we compare these terms to the value of l raised to the phi minus 1th power, where l equals 0 0.5 times f double prime of r divided by f prime of r, or 0 0.5 f double prime of 0 divided by f prime of 0. The recursion for the secant method states that a sub n plus 1 equals a sub n minus f of a sub n times the quantity a sub n minus a sub n minus 1 divided by the quantity f of a sub n minus f of a sub n minus 1. We will use the software Mathematica for this exercise. First, we define f of x which is e to the x power plus x divided by 20 minus 1. Then we define r, r equals 0. Then we define phi. We then have the starting values for the recursion. Since f prime and f double prime are both greater than 0, we choose a sub 1 and a sub 2 to the right of the root r equals 0. Let's try a sub 1 equals 3 and a sub 2 equals 2. Now for the recursion, we use a do loop. a sub n plus 1 equals a sub n minus f of a sub n times the quantity a sub n minus a sub n minus 1 divided by the quantity f of a sub n minus f of a sub n minus 1. The lowest subscript in the recursion is n minus 1. The starting index for the a sub n's is 1. And so if we set n minus 1 equals 1, n must start at 2. For the final value of n, for our first trial with the Mathematica code, let us try n equals 10. Now we define the e sub n's. We use another do loop. e sub n equals a sub n minus r. We can just not type r in this formula, since anyway r equals 0 in our example. But we will make the code more adaptable for other examples when r is not necessarily 0. a sub n starts at a sub 1, and we start n for this do loop at n equals 1. The last estimate for r is a sub n plus 1. And if n ends at 10, the last error value that we will have computed will be e sub 11. Therefore, we continue this do loop up to n equals 11. 
Next, we calculate the fractions e sub n plus 1 divided by e sub n raised to the fifth power. For this, we use the table command. Inside the table command, we have e sub n plus 1 divided by e sub n raised to the fifth power. e sub n starts at e sub 1, and so n starts at 1. The final value of e sub n is e sub 11, and so setting n plus 1 equals 11, we have n equals 10 as the final value of n for this table. Here are the first 10 values of the sequence. The table of values is only a finite set, and so is not necessarily conclusive but it does seem to hint that the sequence is tending to some value close to approximately 0.63, with the last value being 0.633074. This sequence should converge to L raised to the phi minus 1th power. L equals 0.5 F double prime of R divided by F prime of R, which one can check is equal to 10 divided by 21 or 0.47619 up to 6 significant digits. Raising L to the phi minus 1th power, we have up to 6 significant digits, the value 0.632204. Now let's try carrying out more iterations and find a sub 13 so that we push n all the way up to n equals 12 in the first do loop. Now, this seems like a modest increase in the number of iterations, but there is a reason for this caution. A reason that we will point out in a moment. For the do loop for e sub n, n will go all the way up to 13. For the table command, n will go all the way up to 12. These were the first 10 values of e sub n that we had found earlier. The last value was 0 0.633074. Observe now that the orders of magnitude of the additional terms with the increase of the cap of n from 10 to 12 for the first do loop are suddenly much bigger. One possible reason for this is that round off errors might be snowballing as the number of iterations increase since we are using floating point in our calculations. We can use exact calculation by removing all decimal points in our code. Mathematica, unlike most other software or spreadsheets, has the capability to carry out exact calculations. One big problem, however, is that Mathematica tends to slow down drastically when using exact calculations as opposed to floating point calculations. The viewer can try this out but the viewer should be prepared for a long wait that is if Mathematica even provides any result at all. A more probable reason for this big jump in the order of magnitude of the terms in the sequence is that the secant method converges quite rapidly so that a sub n quickly gets close to the root x equals r, and as a consequence e sub n tends to zero quite fast. If this is the case, we suspect that the precision of the software was not able to handle the division by very small numbers such as e sub n raised to the fifth power, which when rounded off is close to zero, for n greater than 10.